Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we are going to continue the Breaking Plateaus series that I started for NHL 21's Rivals in Hockey Ultimate Team. So if you haven't watched the prior videos, go back and watch those unless you are stuck in Divisions 5 and 4. So this video today, I'm going to go over some things specifically that will help and what I think you should start putting into your and implementing into your game to try and get past this and get into division three today we're going to talk about things about like zone entry as well as starting to use l2 not just to do a full-time spin but to show you guys how to do half spins and cuts like that we're also going to talk about player switching when defending the rush and in the defensive zone as it's quite important. All right, guys, let's get into the video. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you do enjoy it. Here we go. All right, so there's two main methods to gain zone entry, and it is going to be dictated by what your opponent is doing. All right, so the first I'm going to show you is the crisscross or, you know, the behind the back. Like, I don't know whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it the crisscross here. And this is for players that are not forechecking really strong um, on the puck carrier so that you don't have a guy running right at you. He's kind of playing for the passing lanes and whatnot. I'm going to show you why it's so effective uh, because, again, he's going to drag his guy over towards you because he thinks that, you know, if you get by that first CPU that he's in position. But what he's actually doing is pulling the weak side player way out of position and it's going to leave the zone entry wide open on the backside just like in this play here now again the thing about this play is that you want to be setting it up and dictating it before your opponent again your opponent is going to give you the read that you want to use so again if he's not selecting the first four checker in and attacking you directly then again, you can go behind the back and send it to that weak side player who basically can just straight line into the zone. And your opponent is going to tell you that right off the bat, really. And unless he adjusts, keep doing it because he is just locked onto that puck carrier and you're going to be able to eat guys alive on zone entries when they play like this. All right, so the next thing we need to talk about is basically straight lining. And what you want to start implementing in your game is the self-sauce. So... Uh, back in NHL, I think 19 or maybe it was 20. I believe it was 19. Um, it was super overpowered. It's not nearly the same thing, but every little bit helps, especially with the penalty that your defensemen receive when they turn around defending the rush. So all you have to do is without touching the direction, the, the thumbsticks at all, tap R1. OK, and what it'll do is it'll push the puck forward a little bit. And again, you'll get kind of a, your, your top end speed will little be a little bit more because obviously you don't have the puck. You skate faster without the puck and you'll get a slight advantage. And if you start learning how to time it right when the defenseman turns around, you can usually burn by them. So this is going to take some getting used to because a lot of people will just tap our one, but they're holding down one of the directional, uh, you know, one of the directional uh, sticks uh, trying to skate. And it's just going to go way too far. This is just a simple tap, very light R1 or RB, depending on the console. And it's going to set up a lot of things when you can just straight line into the zone next thing i want to talk about is starting to implement uh the correct player switching so honestly at the top end of the game player switching in nhl 21 is the skill gap the people that can player switch the best usually have the slight edge and advantage among the pro players so what i mean by uh you know manually switching players is if you hold down r2 and use the right thumbstick and aim it in the direction of the player that you want to select and then let go of r2 you will select that player so more often than not, when you just tap R2, it's going to give you to the player that's closest to the puck. And while that's fine, um, when defending the rush, however, it is more important often than not to make sure that you're set up if you can't catch the guy that has the puck. So let's say you switch to the player that is closest to the puck area, but he's already beaten. Now you're pretty much toast because you didn't switch to the right guy and to actually allow you to, to set up a play here. So in this play, again, this is all we're doing is we're just switching to the right guy, this being the left hand, the left defenseman, and I'm doing it right from the top of the circle because I know that once the puck is turned over, that's the, the far side defenseman is who I want to select when defending this rush. This is also super important in the defensive zone. And again, being aware of which player is playing which position. In my prior Breaking Plateau video series, or videos, I show you guys where to be in the defensive zone and where each player should be. What I like to do when someone is forcing cross creases or, you know, it's kind of getting dangerous down low is I go and select the far winger. So the winger that's on the opposite side of where the puck is deep in the zone and I'll bring them all the way down. And more often than not, usually your CPU and enough will intercept like in this play here. But in case you have that guy to come down and then give you a two on one defensively, leaving that far defenseman wide open at the top of the circle. 
is going to take some time for that player to get him the puck. So that's usually what I like to do in the defensive zone. And again, that's by holding R2. And then in this instance, pressing uh, up into the right on the right thumbstick, and that'll select Matthews in this case. And lastly, guys, we need to start implementing L2s for half spin. So this is how you half spin and protect the puck. If you have not watched my advanced offense video that walks you through step by step on how to do this, you need to go watch it. I'm just going to briefly cover it here and point out what you need to start doing with it. But that advanced offense video will walk you through how to do the half spins correctly. And it's by holding, well, L2 and L or L uh, the left trigger and X or A on the on the controller. And it's a little bit uh, weird to get used to. It's something I recommend going into practice mode with. But I'll show you here. Once you start getting in the corner and down low, implementing a half spin when you come out from the boards is going to drag your attention uh, your opponent's attention to the puck carrier and that's exactly what happens here you're going to leave your you're going to get wide open back to our place especially in the middle divisions when you start implementing this and here's a perfect play of showing why all of these strategies combined are so effective so straight lining in the zone okay doing a crisscross and then holding l2 to kind of stop up and turn around while protecting the puck and then again passing behind your back to the guy that's wide open and it's going to lead to a lot of offense here just like in this goal all right, guys, so once you master all of these combined with the other strategies and things that I've talked about in the prior Breaking Plateaus videos, you should be able to get into a round division three. And again, I've had a great um you know response to these videos they've been really helping which is super awesome you know just from my standpoint i love the fact that these are working and i can't wait to show you the more advanced stuff coming up shortly guys again let me know what you think in the comments section down below and please subscribe for daily nhl and mlb content i go live on twitch 10 a.m eastern time every single day link is down below i'll see you guys next time have a good one